So we get, you got these four screws to take this top lid off the heater. Now some of them have a two or three thumb screws with plastic caps on them. I like those a lot better. Because it's kind of a toolless. A lot of these are toolless. You don't need no tools. Um, this one evidently I'm going to have to have this Phillips screwdriver. Okay, now those are out. You can just lift that up, set it to the side. Now, most of these you can grab that knob and pull right off. And that ring will come off. That gets you down to here. Now we can put the knob back on. Maybe. So now, we're going to take those four thumb screws right here that holds this base, um, or it holds the piece that holds the wick into the base of the unit. So you're, what you're going to want to do is take those four thumb screws off. Got one back here in the middle of nowhere. Well, they could have designed that one in a little better place for you. Now, once you get those off, those four off, this should just lift right up off of there. Okay. okay, so now there's what you got is a wick. Okay. Now these wicks, if you was changing it, you would just simply pull it out, okay, and then you'd put the new one in. Off. There's little protrusions where they stamped into it and made little spikes. That's what you got here. You got a line on a lot of these wicks, and that line is what you line up to the bottom edge of this. This is your bottom of your um, wick holder. So you want to put that up in there. Now some will just have set pins where they'll have a little peg sticking out and the wick has to go over them pegs and you can't move it at all. Now this is where you start out new. Some will have many lines on it because they'll fit different models. And if your wick does get burnt up, sometimes I'll take one time and I'll move this wick up, you know, just uh, maybe a sixteenth or an eighth inch above the line and that way you can go again with it. For your new wick, you're just going to want to, see this one's all kerosene now, it's not the same, but you just want to get your wick down in there. I just get it kind of halfway straight in there and then I'll pick me a spot on the side and I'll stick it right there where the line is and then I'll just kind of work myself around and you want to kind of stretch it. You want to make sure you get over them pegs so you don't get no wrinkles in it all the way, all the way around. You don't want no wrinkles and you want to stay as even to that line as you can. I got something holding me up back here. It's hard. This is a mess with a used with a yeah you know, used wick. It's hard to see what I'm doing. But 
like I said, there's just a line there. And you just want to make sure you get that as close to the line as possible. Now I don't go around and that I see there's a few places I'm not where I want to be. And you want to make sure that you keep it going. You don't want to get it stretched. Um, you don't want to stretch it and end up with a big wrinkle at the end. So you want to make sure it goes in a flat and it's where it's, you know, it, it just follows the metal around. Like I said, you want to try to avoid any wrinkles. You want that wig just as even as possible. Especially if it's a new wig. You want to start out even. And good. It's hard to do this and try to make it so you guys can see. But. Now I've got the wick in there and I rub it around there good and make sure it sticks into them little prickly things. And see now, I don't know if you can see here, but somehow I got a wrinkle right in here in the wick. So now I gotta go around and try to spread this out and get rid of that wrinkle. Because if it's, it slides over top of this neck in the kerosene heater right here. And if you get any wrinkles and doubles up, it'll make it not want to go up and down right. So let me fix this. Okay. And now what you got in here is you just got this neck that comes up and that wick just goes over top of this neck and right down and as it goes it gets sandwiched between this and your holder here with the lugs in it so like I say you just want to make sure the most important part is getting the wick in there straight and making sure there's no wrinkles in it okay you want to make sure it fits tight against that back casing that's got the little pricklies in it I say some of them will have pins in them so they'll be a little different Okay, so now we'll try to get this on there, get this orientated the right way. You just get the wick over top. Make sure it's down in there good. It should fall in there pretty much by itself. Like I say, most of these kerosene heaters are all going to be the same basic principle. So now once that's down in there, we're going to stick these nuts on here, the wing nuts back on, and we'll try it. Now there's a rubber gasket between this and this on most all of them I've ever seen. So these wing nuts don't have to be, you know, they're, they're just there to hold it down. You don't have to try to use excessive clamping force or over tighten them, I guess. They're actually, once you've done them once on your heater, it's not really that big of a deal. I say it's, this one's fairly new heater. You really didn't need nothing. I just wanted to, just to show you how to take the wick out. Now this one, I don't like the way they put this one back in that hole. Kind of hid that one on you. The older kerosene heater designs I had seemed to be a little more on the user friendly. Now that's your tip over weight. So that if that gets knocked over, it releases this latch, and that's what kicks the wick back down in. So now that's what you want. You want it to kick back in. Now 
if you really wanted to, you could measure this wick all around and make sure you, you want to make sure that wick is about the same height all the way around. Which this one looks pretty good. Okay, I went and got a ruler just so I could kind of show you on the measurement there. And this one down in there is about three eighths of an inch high. Okay. Um, after it's burnt a little bit, it wouldn't be unusual to see a quarter inch. I say most of them I ran into has been close to the same in the same general area, so <clears throat> you can always kind of look to see. Now, one way to tell without doing all the measuring is just bring your wick down, bring it up to where it just comes through. And then you can see here on the top, you can see if it comes up through that hole all the way around evenly, <clears throat> then you're probably pretty good to go. You want that wick as even as you can because if you have low spots and high spots, your flame won't burn right. You'll have real high over on one side and over here you might be low and when you get it too high you'll start smoking and stuff like that. So um, you just want to make sure that that's the way that is. Now, most of these will have battery plates where you can put in there and what that does is the auto start and when you hit this auto start there's a little um, igniter that comes up it has like a little light bulb filament on it and what that does it makes that heat up just like a light bulb would and it makes the wick catch on fire okay now that's something I really don't use that feature that much I'd rather just light it with a um, match and the reason I do that is because I don't use this enough to leave the batteries in it and I don't want to forget and let it get all corroded so it's just as easy for me to do that like I say if you just get this up there where it comes through you'll see if you're pretty well even or not and around three-eighths of an inch is what this wick sticks up so even if you're a quarter you're probably in good shape say all these are all these are a little different so you just have to look at yours and see, but they're all basically the same too, you know? It's the same design, just little variances of them. Even the square ones, about all of them are kind of close to the same. Okay? So now, when you get all that together, and it doesn't look like that's sitting down right here. all the way <clears throat> that's the main important thing you just want to make sure that everything is together the way it's supposed to be nothing should be forced together everything should go together pretty smooth and then you'll put your screws um, thumb screws whatever you do happen to have here And again, these are like your thumb screws. They don't have to be as tight as you can get them. Just snug. They're not going nowhere. So, um, like I say, just get them snug. That's all you need. You can buy parts for these in a lot of places. A lot of the hardware stores will have them. Um, some stores will sell the wicks for what they sell, but you can go on the internet. There's a lot of places on the internet that sell a lot of different people that sell a lot of different wicks and pieces. Um, you can buy this window screens if you need them, or the mylar, is that what they call that? And then you're going to want to put kerosene in. And, um, 
if it's a, I don't know if I said this, but if it's a brand new wick, all right, what you're, what I do is I'll let this drip all of the way the wick's all the way to the bottom. I'll fill the tank full of kerosene, and then I'll let it set for about an hour, at least an hour, um, two hours is even better. Cause you want to make sure that wick gets completely saturated before you light it. And then how I light them, I just got a long lighter. I don't have it out here, just a screwdriver. Let's pretend this is one of them long butane lighters. I'll hit the auto start. Turn the wick all the way up. Hit the auto start, and that lifts this little heat sink piece here up. And let you see the wick. So I'll take the long lighter, I'll just put it in there and I'll light that wick, and then I'll let it down. Okay, now it's going to take a little while for the thing to get burning right up to, you know, when it gets hot, it burns better than when it's cold. It's going to take a little while to get hot. And you got to remember that you've been touching everything in there, so you are going to get a little bit of smell until the kerosene and everything gets off everything you've touched. Now, what I'd like to do is once this thing gets up to where it's almost burning right, almost the temperature and stuff, I'll go in here and sometimes I'll have to take this and just kind of wiggle that little heat sink thing to get it down in there and get it centered and make sure the flame comes out evenly. And you can look in there, if your flames are coming way out on one side and real short on the other, that means usually your wick is um, not flat, you know, it's not level. And if it doesn't go up and down easily, usually that means you have a wrinkle in your wick. As long as you keep good kerosene in these and um, you take care of the wick and clean it once in a while and stuff, these will give you a pretty good service and they don't really smell too bad. I mean, it's an unvented heater, you know, so if you're in an enclosed area, you are going to get fumes off of it. It's just, you know, but it doesn't smell or nothing really bad if you have your heater maintained well and run good kerosene.